All right, this is uh, inappropriate, Earl. Fresh off the heels of one of the most, not one of the most, the most controversial episode ever. I mean, uh, there'll be a part two coming next week with Tommy Morris, the great talent coordinator, ex-talent coordinator of the Comedy Store. Get some interesting takes. And this man was mentioned, my next guest, uh, in the Tommy Morris episode. He's uh, a comic, a podcaster, uh, in charge of the number one podcast network out there, Death Squad. Uh, friend to all in the Los Angeles comedy community. Um, producer of the Joe Rogan Experience. Please put your hands together for the one, the only. You know him as Red Band, but he has a first name too. Brian Red Band. Hi, Earl. I like your uh, little microphone thing you got there. You got the uh, brass knuckles microphone clip on your microphone. <laughs> It's my only sponsor of Inappropriate Earl. Oh, from really? The singer of Rat, Stephen Piercy. He has a company called Mike Knuckles. Oh, that's so cool. And uh, they come in various models. This is the Talon model. <laughs> uh, he was nice enough to sponsor me. And uh, thank you to Stevie Rochelle for providing the music. Uh, but enough about the sponsors. Uh, I've always wanted you on this podcast, but I just figure someone like you is too busy. Uh, I, I really have been cutting a lot of my work down lately. Like, uh, as he's, you know, he said like the, the producer of the Joe Rogan podcast, you know, I'm not even really doing that much there anymore. I, uh, I do like once a week on that now, uh, on death squad. I'm, I used to do like 11 podcasts a week, but now I'm doing like two or three. Uh, I'm just trying to not work as much because I, for four years, I, I just, non-stop like uh, i had i was if i was awake i was doing something usually podcast related or something but how many episodes does uh the joe rogan experience is it uh based on his schedule um yeah it used to be we would do one once a week would like hey you know let's do one and then it became like hey we should get somebody else on you know as a guest let's do ari or something then we started doing twice a week and then three times a week now sometimes joe has like four or five podcasts a week I usually only do one or two a week, if anything, nowadays. Uh, right. We, we uh, got a new employee, Jamie, who you might see at the comedy store all the time. Uh, he pretty much learned everything I did. And so he's like kind of like my shadow now, or he does half. He does it now. A lot of the work now. So it's nice. And you're doing more stand up now. More stand up. Yeah. I'm focusing more on stand up because I don't I, I think that's uh something I like doing and I don't really consider it as much work as sitting on my computer, editing podcast and like video and, you know, doing all this stuff. That's not fun. I, I consider more of a job and I consider more of a stand up, uh, something I just enjoy, you know, not well, so much in LA, but <laughs> well, stand up in LA is awful. Oh uh, yeah. It's, it's bad. But you've got the, the best thing because you built your fan base, not before you started doing stand up, but you, you know, you all you have a following bigger than any headliner. It's nice because it's when I think one of the, the the cool parts about doing stand up is when the audience knows you. And a lot of times, you know, you can go anywhere on the road like uh, a chuckles in Indiana or whatever, and they'll sell a weekend for you, you know, by giving away tickets or two for ones or, you know, they'll. It, or they will just have people that go to every show every week, you know, kind of like a movie. So a lot of times you're doing these shows and then they don't know who you are. So you have to like, you know, win them over and shit like that. But when you have your own audience base, it's nice because I could go to Indiana and have, you know, a hundred people there that know exactly who I am and know everything about me. So it makes the shows a lot more fun. And that's what's cool about Death Squad is it's kind of like a, a bunch of comedians, you included. Like I could take you anywhere and people already know who you are, which is way better than half the times when you're on the road or something. Oh, yeah. You it's know? like, you know, when I used to open up for Rob Schneider and I still do occasionally, no one knows who I am. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think when, when I used to be a fa comic fan growing up, I used to always go, well, that opener guy was funny and the second guy was funny, you know, but I never really go, who was that person? Like I never, I didn't have the ability to like follow them on Twitter or, oh, what? They have a podcast, you know, it was more of like, oh, the opener went up and I will never see that guy again, but he was funny. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, when you're the opener, you're not really plugging your Twitter address right. while you're right. going up. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
and you know when you open up for rogan or, or joey diaz uh i would imagine that crowd knows you almost as much as they know joey or joe yeah uh yeah i'm definitely from the podcast and I mean, I used to open up for Joe and Joey and I, I like I got stuck after Joey Diaz in the middle and I had only been doing comedy for like a year and uh, it was it was rough. But I mean, it was fun. It was a cheat code in comedy, uh, you know, in like the three years that I used to do that, it really made me grow fast and like and, you know, having Joe, you know, you get off stage and Joe go, you need to edit that, cut that down, take this. Like he really helped me out in, in like the, the basics of joke writing and like not saying too much and getting to the point and, you know, cutting jokes that are not funny that you just believe in, you know, stuff like that. But I've got a few of those. Yeah. Do you ever pull out the, the ones that like, I'm going to try this one more time. Oh, I've got a joke about baby Godzilla that I'm obsessed with. And it ne to be honest with you, it's, baby Godzilla? Are you serious? it's never done well once, but I love the joke. And I, every now and then when I think I have the crowd, like a hot crowd, I'll like, Hey, I got to do this just to see if you guys will like it. And it never does well. Oh ever. my God. I have to hear it. I have a weird thing with baby Godzilla. Well, I cry. I still to this day cry whenever son of Godzilla comes on. <laughs> And there's two scenes where uh, the first scene when Godzilla is trying to teach him to blow smoke and he can't do it. He keeps like, blowing out these little baby smoke rings. So finally Godzilla gets pissed and hits him over the head with his tail and he finally blows it out. Like it, and I, it just, it reminded me of me and my dad. And then at the end, I mean, I'm 47. I still cry at this scene. <laughs> There's a big fight scene with the monsters and they beat them up and they walk off into the snow <laughs> and it's snowing really bad. And it it's like, there's no CGI, obviously. And it's just, you know, it's just a dude and probably an eight year old kid in the costume. <laughs> and it, I'm telling you, man, if you don't cry. <laughs> it makes you choke up. That's so cute. I have this thing where like my go-to doodle uh, is baby Godzilla. Like, that, like, like, uh, if I have a napkin and a pen, I'll immediately just subconsciously draw baby Godzilla and not even know why. I have no idea why I do that. Well, cause he's kind of an interesting <laughs> looking, he almost, they made him look kind of human. Like he's got those big bug eyes and he's kind of looks like a fat bald guy. <laughs> But like a miniature fan, I just, I mean, I got to watch that again. I'm telling you, it's, I don't know if, it, I guess it would be on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it just fast forward to the end scene and it's like the little instrumental they have like a, almost like a jazz type of uh, thing. It's, I'm, but I cry at weird things. Did you grow up kind of like science fiction-y, like uh, yeah. monsters and all that stuff? Like probably my favorite show as a kid was this thing that nobody ever seems to have seen called giant robot it was about this robot who was dormant and uh they uh there was this little japanese kid who found this watch and the the only thing that would wake up the robot was whoever spoke into this watch first and they had total control so this little kid is like hello hello into the watch so this kid controlled the robot wow and uh the bad guys would always fuck with this kid and and the giant robot would always you know win the battle and so at the end i cry at this too dude i'm <laughs> telling you you will cry at this you got to watch all the episodes so you're emotionally invested in the storyline but uh the bad guy in giant robot was this emperor guillotine 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 and he's made of nuclear material so no one ever fucked with him because he would blow up and blow up the world <laughs> so the end scene He's fighting giant robot and guillotines like uh, you can't touch me or I'm going to blow up the world. So giant robot picks him up and flies off into space oh. and he blows up and the little kid starts crying. <laughs> just, it's, oh, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> what was that on? Was that like regular NBC? Uh, it was on uh, like uh, basically what was the first cable channel? K it's KDOC, which is channel 56 in California. And uh, they had like weird, like 
Speed Racer, like shows that weren't on like two, four. And, but this was at a time when there was only three channels, like two, right. four, and uh, Man, seven. I want to YouTube this so bad and just see it. I'm telling you, John, it, it's, I'm sure all the episodes are up uh, somewhere. Right. And uh, I'm not really doing it justice, but <laughs> so, and Giant Robot, his fingers were like nuclear missiles. So, like, when, he would have to fight a monster. He would just like. <laughs> oh, that's great. I mean, for the time. Now, I, in someone who's as technically as savvy as you are, he's like, these special effects are horrible. But he was 19, like 60. Yeah, right. So, I mean, what what did you watch as a kid? Did you watch stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, I remember Buck Rogers was big uh, for me growing up. Star Wars, obviously. But uh, um, I'm trying to think of what, what there was. One thing that I, 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 my show that I really loved growing up, but no one can remember is when there was a monkey that was the president of the United States. His name was Mr. Smith. And I swear to God, his voice was done by George Burns or something like that. And he was just like, like people would come to him as like, president, what were we going to do? And he's like, Hey dog, you know, we got, like, <laughs> I, and it was like a sitcom on ABC and I don't think it, it probably went one season or something, but I remember that was my favorite show of all, and I can never find it. Like I, I've tried YouTube and everything, trying to find Mr. Smith. I think it was his name. Wow, that's I. I mean, I'm a TV connoisseur. Of yeah, that. Uh, it's like the Small Wonder years. It was around that time period. But uh, there was a lot of shows like that. Yeah, like, that were around for one or two seasons, and yeah, uh, I was really big in the cartoons growing up, like Hanna Barbera and Tom and Jerry was my big one. You know, I never got into cartoons. I liked more of the uh, like shows like The White Shadow, mm -hmm. uh, which was an amazing show. Very, uh, they covered some wild stuff, you know, racism, abortion. You know, this is like 1980, so it was like, you know, pretty cutting edge stuff. So. I was a huge wrestling fan also growing up. Like, Let's get into that. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like I, I, my mom tells me more things than I remember about it. So I must have been molested by in that time period or something. But <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's breaking news. Maybe this will be better than the Tommy episode. Red band molested. <laughs> During WWF2. No. I'm tagging hashtag. That's the first hashtag. <laughs> but I used to, you know, like Piper's Pit and like all, like I had all the wrestling toys you know like the big ones that were like all rubbery if i can remember or something like that uh uh and but then i remember ufc one came out and then i just stopped watching wrestling like it was just like night and day i was like oh my new guy is uh that big big tall bald guy butterbean is my name or whatever butterball uh, well i mean <laughs> i don't know yeah i mean there's butterbean eric butterbean yeah. uh, i don't know his last name uh, and then uh ufc one was like yeah i remember buying the uh the vhs at best buy because mm -hmm. people forget i mean like for like newer fans they always thought the ufc was this big uh no you know what it was to me it was like in in college or whatever when i was a freshman I had one of those tapes that you could like record like three shows on like right. six hours, you know, like low quality. Uh, and I had like UFC one, UFC two, and then like faces of death. And that was my, my, my tape that like every Friday would go to a friend's house, drink beer and watch those three things over and over and over again. But back then it was just brutal. It was like, you know, black belts versus bartenders of Applebee's, you know, like it was so mixed matched that it was almost gory, like faces of death. Like you, you really thought these people were about to die. You know, I prefer that era to be honest with you. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I mean, I, exciting. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, you'll, they're never going to go back to that era. No, uh, no. You probably, I mean, I remember Don Fry, who was probably like my first celebrity guest I had on this show. Uh, I was in awe of him. Like the first guy he fought, I think at UFC three was a taxi cab driver, yeah. Thomas Hernandez. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Don Fry is a pretty, uh, if for for that era, very experienced, well rounded fighter, and Thomas Hernandez was just some four hundred pound taxi cab guy. Yeah, who I'm sure uh, I forget the first UFC, basically that jo the Joe Silva of that time, art something. Uh, I think he said he went up to him and said, "Hey, you're a big guy. Can you fight?" <laughs> <laughs> and Don Fry knocked him out in ten seconds. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you know, like Tank Abbott fighting, Tank and, Abbott. And, uh, 
like you know uh that karate guy who's the karate guy remember he had like a he wore the full karate outfit and he had like the keith hackney yeah who is in one of the greatest ufc fights ever because they had him i think in maybe ufc4 or something and i'm sure your fans will jump on me because yeah. I, I might be wrong uh against the 800 pound sumo wrestler that's right that's what it was. emmanuel yarborough and you would think by looking at just on paper like wow this sumo guy's gonna kill this guy yeah and he threw one karate chop the sumo guy missed and he was so fucking fat he fell down and he was beat down and face. then uh keith hackney was just like yeah any back fist front fist karate chops and he beat him yeah it, it was weird because i grew up in ohio and uh you know i didn't we didn't really ever had like the UFC come to Columbus, but we had like the tough man contest and we had the Arnold Schwarzenegger classic every year. For some reason, Arnold Schwarzenegger just it, once a year came to Columbus and had this big muscle thing going on. And, and he, Arnold Schwarzenegger also owned like a restaurant in Columbus with Sylvester Stallone and Bruce Willis to planet Hollywood. Yeah. Right. It was like the, one of the first ones or something. And it was at the same mall that Victoria's secret uh, <sighs> owner, Les Wexner, who owns Victoria's Secrets and Express, he built this huge mall. So it was this mall in the middle of Columbus, Ohio, would have like, on some days you would see it be like, oh, there's Arnold Schwarzenegger and a Victoria's Secret models. And in the <laughs> and then there's the Columbus, Ohio fat chick. You know, it, it was such a weird experience growing up in Columbus because there was so many weird things about it like that. Like, why was Arnold Schwarzenegger so invested in Columbus, Ohio? Well, sure, Victoria's Secret models. I guess uh, so. And he still has that thing every every year. I think it's called the Arnold Classic. Yeah, Arnold Classic. And uh, I think it's the second biggest bodybuilding uh, competition uh, other than Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. So, And uh, in UFC used to be the same weekend as it. But recently they stopped doing that. But it was awesome because you'd go there for UFC during it. So you would like have all these like crazy muscle chicks everywhere. And it was fun. It made UFC a little bit more fun. I'm scared because Cyborg just followed me on Instagram. Oh, really? So I got to watch my P's and Q's now because I know, uh, you know, our mutual friend, uh, the great Tony Hinchcliffe is... Uh, and got some Twitter beef with her, and oh, I'm, yeah. I'm staying out of that. No shit. And then Tony just got, I mean, Tony's already training. He ate meat for the first time last night in five years. We went to, uh, he, he's been vegan and vegetarian for five years. I don't know if it has anything to do with the cyborg thing, but the other day he's like, I think it's time for me to start eating meat. And so we went to Fogo last night, and he oh, ate wow. pounds of meat. Well, I mean, cyborg is... Uh... I mean, she's a she's a strong woman. Yeah, I don't know why he would pick a fight with her. I mean, you know, it's you know, we're all comics. You think on you know, I've said some pretty mean things on Twitter about just trying to be funny about various celebrities, and you know, you never think they're going to call you out. You know, yeah. I did a few Charlie Sheen HIV jokes. I'd be pretty uh, weirded out if Charlie Sheen started tweeting me back. Oh, geez. oh man, that Charlie Sheen thing was brutal because at first I'm like, you know, I've known about this whole Charlie thing, Charlie Sheen thing for a while. You know, I've known how like I've known girls getting paid like thirty thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars for like just hanging out with him for a week to fuck him. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, if he could do that, you know, I've heard others. breaking news. <laughs> But this might be better than the Tommy episode. <laughs> no, I mean, allegedly, uh, you know, I've heard stories where he's just the whole time in the bathroom, curled up in a ball doing what he does. And he just wants people around him, you know, type thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then I thought, wait a second, have I you have to kind of do the Charlie Sheen ladder of did he fuck this person because that person fucked that person? Maybe I got, you know, are you in the Charlie Sheen uh, tree of truth <laughs> well you might have been i mean like you've uh let's just try and put this in as nice a way possible you've dated or uh had relations with women in the um uh pornographic film business yeah i did the i did the math though it took me a couple hours and no i'm safe in the in the tree though like there's no connection to me and charlie which you know, that's scary because he would not tell the girls and then those girls would be in the porn industry 
and then just fuck other people. And then, you know, how long has this been going on for? I thought when Charlie Sheen said he had HIV, that there was going to be this explosion of AIDS in LA, you know, from, you know, it might be because I mean, he had, he would have 10 to 20 girls over, you know, and if he fucked any of those girls, then those girls fucked other girls. And, and then they fucked a comic yeah, and, and they and fucked a comic, which is definitely easily possible knowing half the comics I know. Oh, a con- yeah. a male comics are pigs. <laughs> I've lost every girlfriend I've ever had at the comedy store because of these animals. <laughs> I mean, there's no code. I I live off of code of uh, ethics that I don't think a lot of people do. So. No, I don't think they do either. It's it's ridiculous. I've had many problems with comedy store to the point where it's like, I don't even want to introduce my friends to girls that I date anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so secretive <laughs> now about who I date. Yeah. Uh, Cause I just, uh, and it's not just the comedy store, but I mean, you and I are there probably more than other clubs. Right. I, you know, uh, I, I think it's very, uh, people's thinking as well uh, that girl's fucking red band or earl she'll fuck me yeah uh, guess what she won't <laughs> right in most cases the uh, worst though have you when you meet somebody new though and you're going through like oh so have you ever been you know any comics and then they say that one comic like god damn it well i mean <laughs> you know these some of these comics are so stupid though they text whoever i'm dating or was dating at three or four in the morning uh, hey, uh, uh, let's blah, blah, blah. And I'm, <laughs> usually the girl's in bed next to me going, hey, look who just texted me. Yeah, isn't that funny? So they're not fooling anybody. <laughs> it happened recently. Did it? Uh, and it's the same guy who was texting the last girl. Really? So, <laughs> uh, you know, it just... <laughs> That's crazy. You know, and then, you know, it's just uh, animals. It I, is you animals. Know, even in my horniest of days, I was never like that. Like, if you, like, you've dated some beautiful women. I've never once thought, I want to try and, uh, you know, yeah. it's unbelievable. It is. It, and it's, it's really gross because I had one recently where the guy came up to me and goes, Who's that girl? And I'm like, Oh, you know, this girl, blah, blah, blah. I've been hanging out with her a lot lately, blah, blah, blah. Next thing I know, like two days later, I see him with her getting out of a car. You know, he's a, he's a lot more famous and rich than me, you know? So it wasn't like I was dating her or anything, but he immediately must've honed in on her. And then, uh, you know, cause then next thing I know they're fucking and I'm like, Oh, okay. I guess, uh, I'm just going to write that one off the list. <laughs> there's no just, there's yeah. no, uh, code of ethics. Yeah. You know, so, but, you know, that's, you know, that's the world of L.A. comedy. <laughs> you know, you know that going in, uh, you know, don't bring a girl up to the comedy store. It's probably yeah, the best. It's uh, the best advice. And it really sucks because I always break that advice, mostly because they get mad if I don't bring them to the comedy store. So you kind of have to do that once in a while. Uh where like what what goes on at the comedy store? I want to see what goes on at the comedy that that whole thing. A lot does. <laughs> and it's the greatest club on earth. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the Ice House is great, the Improv's great, Laugh Factory not so much, just because you can't hang there. You know, they charge comics to go to perform or to watch. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a show at the Laugh Factory and I go to the door and say, "Hey, I'm Earl. I'm friends with Red Band." They're like, "Great, fifteen bucks." <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? You know that place. Ugh. I mean, I love the crowds there. As a performer, have you, you've done shows there, right? I've done a couple. Like they don't. Uh, I have a weird, weird relationship with the Laugh Factory. Like for a while, they were doing like death squad shows. I'm like, you can't just do call it a death squad show. You know, like that's fucked up. Well, I mean, <laughs> would they have like like comics who you uh, you put on death squad shows? And- yeah, me. Yeah, they would put comics on. That I would have on Death Squad shows, but they would sell it as their own Death Squad show. And I'm like, you can't really do that. That's bullshit. But I've been on a few other shows where, like, you know, Dom Herrera had me on a show and blah, blah, blah. And I've always had fun, but and I've done their Vegas room. But uh, I, I don't know. It's I think I'm a little bit I'm I, I'm really dirty. So, like, if it's not my audience and you're mixing me with, like, a, a clean guy it's really salt and pepper you know it's like oh here's the here's here's this guy's version of comedy oh and here's like a doug stanhope version of comedy. you know it's i'm good for like r-rated shows or dirty shows but when i'm on like a like a white bread show you know like mom and dad and the kids uh 
I'm not the best at that kind of shit. But I mean, that's what's, you know, great is you've got, I mean, the key to success in comedy to me is finding a fan base that likes your stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, Dane Cook, whether you like him or not, or in between, like he found a, an audience of people who like his act, you know, Phil Madison Square Garden with them. Yeah, it's so weird, right? You know, Dean Del Rey. Uh, <laughs> like it's the perfect example of, you know, finding uh, rockers and, uh, you know, that age range of people who love them. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, I really wish, though, that, it, you know, it kind of sucks because I used to get a spots you know all the time at the store uh just locally right. you know but never got really spots at the store but now it's like you know uh, i thought when tommy was going to be gone that it would be you know like oh finally i don't have to deal with that bullshit anymore it's going to be normal now it seems like it's it's gotten almost to the point where whoever's doing it out i don't know adam's still right. doing it or whatever now but now it's like uh it's 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 it seems more crowded because now it's like all the comics that hated Tommy came back. So now it's like you know fifty percent more comics yeah. at the comedy store trying to get spots. So and the know. same amount of spots, yeah. but like you know, like Joe came back, Joey came back, right? Uh, and I think Adams reached out to like people like Rob Schneider, who like Tommy, uh, uh, you know, let's just say, uh, you know, I think Tommy told him come come on Mondays. Right. Which is the potluck night. Right, right. Which is crazy to me. Yeah, that and, is crazy. Uh, like, whether you like Rob or not, yeah, he's a comic crazy. or... Yeah. I mean, it's, it's Rob Schneider. So, uh, you know, there's... Uh, and I'll get into that with Tommy uh, on, on Monday. But uh, <laughs> You should also get into... You know, one thing I thought was interesting, because uh, I, I love that interview, man. I I was uh, I was glued to, the, glued to it. It was... Uh, it was interesting in so many ways, but one thing I thought was interesting is how he said he how much he loved Joe Rogan, which, which, like, is completely false, a hundred percent false. Well, that's why I brought it up. <laughs> I mean, I do. I might not strike you as someone who does research, but I, you know, I'd heard through the years, and I think the one, uh, and I want you to tell this story. Yeah. Uh, you know, I heard that maybe Tommy wasn't the biggest fan of Joe's, but. Uh, so I wanted to see his reaction, and uh, but you one night were performing at I believe Potluck. Uh, yes, yeah, it was uh, friends and family or whatever it was. I was doing like it was like my first time ever being able to do friends and family uh, on the stage in the OR. Now I just want to set this story <laughs> up, and you were recording your set. Yeah, uh, I always record all my sets, you know, on your phone. A lot, most comics, if you ever see them get on stage, they put their phone down on the stool because they're recording their set, so you can listen to it later. And uh, I was nervous because I'd never played that room before. And I... The OR? The OR, because... Uh, I wasn't allowed to perform at the comedy store or do anything at the comedy store for a long time because of the whole Carlos Mencia versus Joe Rogan video. I was kind of like, I don't know, blacklisted there along with Joe for a long time. And uh, when I came back, it was really hard for me to get to, hey, I want to do comedy here. And then... Uh, actually being allowed to uh and i think what happened is uh, if i remember somebody like benji or somebody uh who was hosting that night go dude you want to go up and i'm like uh sure i would love to go up i've never done it before he goes yeah so i think they kind of snuck me on stage uh and so i did my spot and i had a really good set kirk fox i remember was in the back of the room and he came up to me right when i got off stage was like hey brian you know that last joke was f hilarious you should say and he gave me like a tag on the spot and i'm like oh that's great thanks and then i walk a little bit farther i'm walking off you know the stage uh to the back of the room about to you know leave the room and then tommy just jumps in front of me and he i was so in shock because he was very frantic and he was just like, you still working for Joe Rogan, huh? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, yeah, you, 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 you suck dick too. And I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, I know what you do. You, you and Joe that you got, you, you suck each other's dicks and blah, blah. Like, and he was just calling Joe gay and me gay. And then, and then he, he was blabbing about something like, I have you figured out and blah, blah, blah. I get what you, 
And I, I was so confused, but luckily my recorder was still on <laughs> in my front pocket even because I put it in my front pocket. My recorder was on and, the, you know, the next day or two, like I, I was on the Rogan podcast and I was still in shock because I was like, why, why did he yell at me? You know, uh, and uh, we played it on the Joe Rogan podcast uh-huh. and it's it's a beauty. I, I don't know. I wish I could remember what episode it was. I'm sure if you Google it, you can figure it out. But uh, it it really showed me a side that was like wow, this guy is frantically going crazy on me. Like, this is not a normal person. This is a person that just saw me go out, get off stage, get applause, do good on stage, especially for my first time, and then attack me and call me gay and I need to suck, that I suck dick and stuff like, like, very violent, you know. Like, if I had, if that was my first time at the comedy store and I was, like, brand new, I'd just, like, hi, guys, how's it going? I get off stage and then the, the guy and one of the guys in charge of the comedy store came up to you and just just called you a, f- a fag and like all this crap. You'd be like, "What the hell?" And you would never go to that comedy store again. You know that comedy club again. And I I was in you know shocked because I've known Tommy for a long time, but I never was one of the like I feel bad for all the young comics that 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 grew up at the comedy store under his regime. At some for some at some points because they worship that guy they 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 believe the hype they believe the comedy store ghost or you know they 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 think that he is some magical wizard that understands everything when you know what it's probably just schizophrenia you know it's probably mild forms of schizophrenia because that guy listening to your interview in particular is just fucking crazy is what he is. He's he's crazy and it's sad. He might have a little bit of, you know, uh uh like, you know, advice that w- that is good for comics here and there, but he also mixes it in with just horrible advice and horrible dis- like half the people he passed he only passed because they gave him weed every week. I had heard the only way to get it become a regular is to give him weed. So for, I used to get free weed and like, I don't smoke as much weed as you would think. So I would, you know, all right, I'm going to try this little thing. I started giving him weed every week and he'd be like, oh, thanks, Brian, put it, you know, you know, put it in his pocket and stuff like that. I, it, it never gave me more spots. And then after a few weeks, I was like, that's dumb. I'm not going to fuck. I'm not going to pay off this guy with weed, but yeah, there's half the people on the wall that, that are, are on the wall for fucking dumb reasons. Maybe he had a crush on him. You know, like there was a girl that, that, that I knew that he was in love with and he, he was about to pass this girl and he passed another girl that, that, you know, it's supposedly for the same reason. It's so all this, you know, was, sage advice from like a wise man i you gotta like i feel bad for the younger guys because they believe all that shit and they really they really didn't know the the real tommy and if they did they're just being ignorant about it because i saw tommy from the early days i mean i've been to the comedy store for this is my 12th year i've been going to the comedy store uh i saw the early days of tommy to the late days and you know i never once felt like I had to like act different around him or, or kiss his ass more or anything like that. I saw it from the outside and I saw it from, you know, Rogan's side during the Carsman Sia thing. I saw every version of him and I have hours and hours and hours of video of Tommy, you know, just during the early days, you know, I would film his crazy shit because it, it, it made me laugh of how like how he would talk about the lineups and stuff like i have this 15 minute video of him talking about the lineups like why bobby lee is where he's at and why he's and he's at you know what it's all bullshit i do lineups every week you know what it is you put you put the good people out you put the you know depending on the the audience you know what time the crowd leaves it's all basic shit it's it's not it's not that big of a deal. You're either a fucking good comic or you're not a good comic. You know, you're not, I don't know. What do you think, girl? You're like, <laughs> but uh, no, I want you like, I don't talk a lot when someone gets on a roll. Cause, uh, you know, people know my shtick who listen to this show and, yeah. and they're excited to have uh, you on. Cause, uh, you know, you're you and you're, you're, uh, infamous isn't the right word, but you're a well-known, uh, character in the, uh, 
comedy uh, L.A. world or you know nationally now. So they want they don't, I, we want to hear what Red Band thinks. I mean, I agree with everything you say. I mean, I was so desperate to get past at the store. Uh, I thought. You know, I heard the weed things too. I'm like, oh, what if I just bought him a new guitar? Because someone, yeah. <laughs> someone had just stolen his guitar, right? And I thought, what if I buy him a guitar and just stuff it with weed? Yeah, and I got so uh, in the late in the developmental uh, f- f- stages of that thought, I was going online and going on like guitarcenter.com, <laughs> going, all right, if I spend a thousand dollars, that's a pretty nice guitar, and then I'll get him. Uh, some weed from someone we know, uh, a mutual friend, and and just put it in the guitar hole and go, hey man. But I just at the end of the day, I couldn't get past like yeah. that. Yeah, I just couldn't do it. Yeah, and, when uh, I did the weed thing, I felt I just felt gross doing that, and I was just to seeing if I started getting spots or not. It was like more of a test. Well, I get I it see though. If this works. You know, because I know one friend, and I don't want to say their name because, uh, you know, they're not here to uh, re- repute, mm-hmm. but uh, they were passed. I won't even give their sex out. Yeah. And this person was getting good spots. I mean, I can understand. I mean, I get it. You know, part of the perks of being the talent coordinator is you could potentially get favors from people. Yeah. So I get trying to get what you can in that position. Uh, but this person was getting to go on before sam tripoli with like prime spots in the main room or and it's like i could see giving them a wednesday night spot at 1 30 ah, here's your spot where's mm-hmm. my weed but uh you know it was that was tough to see you know when when guys like i won't say me but guys like jason tebow were you know should have been passed and and other deserving people and, learn Oh, Galern. Galern was getting, like, yeah, yeah i mean one spot every two weeks yeah like, it's it's ridiculous and you know, I didn't really know as much until I started booking the like the Ice House, and like I, I have, sh- I've had a show there every Friday for the last four years. Uh, I, I book a show there, and I usually grab all the comedy store people, the people that I find are funny, you know. And uh, when you see some of the lineups that was going on, that, you know, here, here and there, it still kind of happens. You you really wonder what the fuck they are thinking or what favors are done because. I mean, some of these people, like, you, they're doing, they're getting a great spot. And you're like, well, how is this person here? Like this, if if you take this person right now and put them in, in the main room doing like an hour show, can they even do 10 minutes? Or are they doing the same seven minutes they've been doing for 20 years? Like, there's so many people that want that stage time. And it's it, it seems it's like it's been so clogged for so long that I think this new, I think Adam's doing an amazing job uh, lately, kind of playing catch up. I mean, he, he's he got a hard job. If he is doing, I don't even know if he's still doing No, it. he is. Uh, you know, he, uh, he j- they just passed Sandro, who's- Who deserved know, it. Did, me and Sandro used to, you know, every day, hitting the mics you know back in the day sandro uh has been funny for a long time and that's somebody you'd never see getting spots i never see sandro getting spots anywhere but so hopefully that opens up you know and i just wish that they would i I don't know mix it up a little bit more because it's it just seems like sometimes like any comedy club you have like the majority the 75 percent that are there every single night you know and right and i just that's why uh the death squad show i do at the comedy store once a month the secret show my whole idea was that is was getting people back in that haven't been there for a while like i just had uh pablo francisco was- that ha- hasn't been there for 11 years <laughs> and like uh i you know and all these guys that you know didn't that hit heads with Tommy that were scared to go back to the comedy store. I've been trying to mix those guys in and back in just, uh, you know, to show that the place is awesome and, and all those new improvements while they might seem scary, it's way better comedy store than it was five years ago. Well, I think Adam is, uh, and now I think everyone knows this. I'm very good friends with him, but I mean, he's just putting up people who are funny and like Jeff Richards is now back getting, you know, two or three spots a week, good spots, you know, Galern's getting that, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I'll just say this. Adam's been offered a lot of things by people. Hey, if you, if you pass me, you know, 
to hook you up, and he doesn't. You know, it's good. Yeah, no, it's he, but he comes from uh, you know the Tempe Improv, so he and that was a huge club. Uh, so he comes from. If you're funny, you'll get stage time. Where Tommy and we'll get into this a little more in part two with him. There seem to be more things in play with him other than being funny. Yeah, you know? and it's, what, uh, it's favors. I mean. You know, and he talks about how the comic store, he, it was like his big thing. He loved the comic store and, you know, and he loved Mitzi and he loved everything about it. You know, how, how would you, I mean, look, why did he leave? You know, like that's, so you're, you're getting favors from comedians. You're getting free weed from comedians, allegedly. You're getting, you know, all this crap. And then you're also allegedly taking stuff from the place you love so much. So, I mean, there's so many things just to show you like, dude, why, why do people still look up to him? Like as if he's some God and not just a guy that's just fucking scamming the system. And like, he, he's pretty much, you know, he's pretty much doing the same kind of scams. Like people send you an email, you know, like, like he's scamming. He's a scam artist. Well, I mean, I could see people being loyal to him who he passed and who he uh because i you know there were a lot of people and once again i won't say names just because they're not here you know who would when they would get passed would come up to me and go dude it should have been you and i wasn't even, well tommy didn't really do showcases which was another like weird thing he would just kind of randomly you you'd see someone usually a good looking dude uh passed and you're like oh you're getting spots now are you past here? <laughs> you know, yeah. and uh, well, look at the wall. I was looking at the wall last night, and I was looking at all the names. I mean, there's an RC Trucking Company that's on the wall. I don't know if Tommy passed that. <laughs> I don't even know if it's a him. I know. Them. Star strawberries and cream. Like, there's so many weird names on there that you're like, how? How is this? I mean, it's weird. Like. You know, I always used to tell people when I got past, I don't really care about my name on the wall. I just want the spots. Right. But, you know, I lucked out because Tommy didn't pass me. My name got to go right in the probably the best spot to have your name. Absolutely. That center front From, patio wall. You know why that's the best, Earl? I don't know if I told you this because now with like Google Maps and stuff and like the street view, like now, you know, it's always going to be the thing when you take a picture of the comedy store, it's going to be the first, you know, let, name on the wall. And it's like <laughs> literally like right in the middle. Yeah. So I, I, I guess I should thank Tommy for. Yeah. Not Thanks. passing me. And, uh, but you look at the people Adam passed. He's passed five people. I think uh, me, Candace Thompson, uh, Eric Myers, Sandro, uh, and I guess that's it. So uh, is there one more I'm forgetting? I yeah, uh, five. Glickman? Uh, no, he didn't pass no. him. I, Glickman was already passed. No. So uh, I think four. He's passed four people. Uh, and Tommy would not have showcased any of us. Yeah, uh, definitely not Candace Thompson, a black female. Uh, <laughs> Sandro and me probably looked at us as being too old, uh, and uh, I don't know why he wouldn't have passed or showcased Eric. But uh, you know, I'm sure he would have come up with a good reason. So, uh, you know, I think you know he had an interesting uh, method of doing things. That's for sure. I think Adams is a little more. Uh, straight ahead and if you're funny you'll get stage time. adam's common sense for the most part definitely yeah and that's, I mean, and that's what was missing with tommy it was the common sense because it was all that like fairy tale stuff that was yeah, you know <laughs> that, that still kind of goes around on at the comedy store you know but he definitely believed in all the the mystery and the you know to the point where i i sometimes we all thought that he, he would always say, well, Mitzi said this and Mitzi said that. And we're like, did he, she really say that? Or are you Mitzi now? <laughs> you know? well, I mean, no, he wasn't. Uh, you know, it's like taking over for the coach of the Lakers and acting like Phil Jackson. Well, you're, yeah. not, you're not Phil Jackson. Yeah. It's Phil Jackson's Phil Jackson. Uh, but I think Tommy brought a lot of heat on himself because... Like he he would bullshit people. I don't know what he told you, and if he did, please say it. But like with me, he would encourage me, uh, bro. I know everyone loves you. The building loves you. I, I don't care about the building loving yeah. me. Do you <laughs> love me? Uh, you know he he had no intentions of ever passing me. Whereas Adam is the opposite. 
Someone will ask him, hey, can I get a showcase? Can Why aren't I getting spots? And he'll tell them. Mm-hmm. Uh, he'll say, bro, you don't, uh, I don't know exactly what he says, but it's something along the lines of, uh, you're probably not going to get a lot of time up here. Your, your style's just not for me. And although it's a bummer to hear that, I think they walk away not happy, but okay, at least I know where I stand up here. Yeah, near the end, when I was trying on the weed thing to him and stuff like that, he never told me any advice or anything. I'd just be like, hey, can I get some spots? And be like, okay, maybe, yeah, we'll see. You know, but it never got to like A, B, or C, like you're never going to make it or you need, you know, this and that. I, I, I don't know how I would have react to that anyways because i see it's weird for me because when i was trying to get spots at the comedy store i was already you know with death squad selling out shows everywhere i go so it's kind of it's it's hard to kiss somebody's butt to get five minutes you know here and there when i can just go to san diego and have four sold out shows you know so it, it sucks uh it sucked for me and so i was really wondering what he would say to me. Like he never really gave me any feedback ever, except saying that I was a dick sucker and stuff. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, like I said, it's interesting advice, but you did the, the smartest thing. And, and you did what Rob Schneider told me, you know, when he saw I was a little bummed out at the store and like not, not getting much. He's like, dude, you got to create your own shit. So yeah. you don't need any club. And you did that. Yeah. You don't need the comedy store. It's certainly nice to yeah, yeah. be there, but you can go to San Diego at Madhouse or wherever. Uh, just got back from Ohio, four sold out shows with Tony. So yeah, I, my whole thing with the store is always just because it's my favorite place to be because all my friends are there. Like you, know, I'm there almost every night, just hanging out. And so to me, it would be just nice to do spots there just because I'm there. So, you know, so I don't be like, oh, I have to leave now. I have to go do the parlor or I have to go, you know, do the improv and then come back here just to hang out, you know? Well, the store's just so fun. And yeah. It's just like, it really is. You know, like the improv's great. Like tonight is comedy juice and it's, it's a fun hangout. And, mm-hmm. But, you know, the store is just like that bar in Star Wars. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> every unsavory character in the universe is up there, but it's a fun, like, positive vibe and and the weirdos get weeded out at the store yeah you know like if you're not a cool dude to hang or girl although girls get a little more leeway at the store you know you'll be weeded out yeah it's it's pretty awesome how it works itself out usually and you know it's just uh and you do how often is your secret show there once a month once a month they've been trying to get me to do a couple extra ones here and there i guess but it's so hard to book that main room it's just it's a big fucking room it scares me you know it's like it's like if you have only like 40 people come to a show that or a room that holds 350 people it just makes you doesn't make you feel good about yourself you know (laughs) but uh so as much as I hate doing that, the only reason I can do it is that's the only spots I get at the comedy store. You know, even like friends and family, it's like half time. They're like, well, we'll see if we can get you in there. I'm like, all right. Well, the sold out Kill Tony show just ended. So I would like to maybe get, you know, a quick three. <laughs> I know. And, and what can you do in three minutes? I yeah, mean, it's I like, uh, especially, you know, the potluck and friends and family. It, it's like, it's not the hottest crowd most nights because it's, you know, yeah. tourists who are just leaving L.A. probably that night or Tuesday morning. So they're not exactly in the greatest laughing mood. But, you know, once again, you just had a sold out show in, uh, for Kill Tony. So, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting. I have such an interesting thing because I don't even know if I will ever even get past. Like I do. The, I'm going through all the the, the shit that I've been going through, you know, like the uh, whatever the spot development spots. You know, but like I, they put me on development spots like for open mic, the open mic night, like the. <laughs> but that's. <laughs> I mean, dude, development spots what, are now hard to get. What are? But what are development spots? Weren't development spots made originally to be like, hey, we're giving you a spot, and then Mitzi's going to watch you and then give you advice, and then isn't that what a development spot is? I mean, I think when she was around, and and uh, you know more. Uh you know just accessible at the store it, that was the key like uh 
you know, it's you'd, you'd for, it was like a five tiered system. You'd start off at the potluck. You know, if you were funny, you'd get bumped up to friends and family. Uh, and then you'd get development spots, showcase, pass. Right. And then, uh, you know, under Tommy, it was kind of like, you know, uh, if, if for whatever reason he liked you, passed. Right. Like there was no showcase. I mean, I never even got on friends and family. Yeah. I couldn't even get on potluck, which was crazy. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying I'm that great, but I was good enough at that time to get right. a fucking potluck. Uh, and then, you know, so Adam, I think it's getting back to that formula. Which it, it's hard to get in there. I mean, it's, yeah. I think there'll be, and I'm just guessing, uh, maybe three or four showcases a year and maybe one to two people passed. Yeah. It, so it's, that might not seem like a lot. That would be maybe four to six people past a year. Uh, but it's like the spots are so tight now where it, it should be getting a development spot. It's almost like, wow, I can't believe I'm getting this. Yeah. I mean, I I wish it was, I mean, half the development spots I do, it's just like, like lately it's just been, like I, they have this show, would it show up, go up or something like that? And I had a development spot before that show. So I get there and I'm like, wait, I have to do my five minutes in front of uh, these 15 people waiting to go on stage for open mic. Uh, you guys can just have my time, I guess. You know, it's like, this is not going to develop me to anything. It's like- well, that's a tough crowd. I mean, uh, basically, uh, for those of you not knowing out there, uh, show up, go up is like a wild uh, open mic. Uh, improv uh, type of thing. It's primarily comics in the room, so it's it's not. Uh, but you're in a weird position with that show from the standpoint of every comic in there wants to get on your shows. Yeah. So they might give you a little more love. Well, you know. that that and also I feel bad if it's an open mic show doing a spot at an open mic show i don't know it's like these poor guys actually are here trying to get up on stage and and i you know it's not really fair for me to be like all right well brian gets to go first you know i don't know it's just but it's you should go on first because i i I think i think you earned it yeah i think i think development spots should be more like this is a a real show you're just doing five minutes at the beginning of it you know like a like an eight o'clock Bringer juicy, show. yeah, juicy vagina show or, or whatever. You know, Martin or, Harris, yeah, Martin Harris show or something like that. Uh, you know, uh, th- th- there's a lot of bringer shows at the comedy store. Just for those of you not uh, comedy savvy, mm-hmm. um, but those are tough because you, you, because usually the bringer show guys and girls will throw the development spots up first, which is the worst. Cause yeah, it's like okay, we're not here to see Red Band. Uh, make us laugh, Monkey Boy. Right, and it's tough. But you know, the, the spots are so tight now that you know, even getting on those shows is like, hey, take it. And, you know, uh, but you've paid your dues, man. You know, you, you know, if those comics are pissed that you're going on before them, well, it's like, guess what? You create a better death squad. You you produce a better show than the Rogan experience, and then you get to go on before Red Band. Right. Yeah, I mean, and I've been doing stand-up since 2004. 2004 that's is a long time. That's fucking... <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it took like two years off in the middle, but that's, you know, when I moved from Ohio to California, but... But that's 10 years, even yeah. with the two years off. I mean, but I'm much a believer in uh you shouldn't be handed anything no so these comics well why is red band going on ahead of me well how long have you been doing comedy six months well guess what you gotta <laughs> wait yeah uh why aren't i showcasing uh well there's a lot of reasons <laughs> yeah there's a there's a few people lately where you're just like you know wow you've only been doing comedy two years but you're acting like you've been doing it for you know 10 uh i don't want to name names but that you could tell they're already getting angry that they're they've hit that two-year wall i guess you know where they think they they're already to sell out shows everywhere and well you're not you're not (laughs) i've changed i thought i was ready you know five years into comedy i thought i was like oh yeah this is this is it, man. I've finally figured it out. But, you know, 
then I met Tom Segura and I'm like, holy shit. I love how Tom Segura talks on stage. It's so much more relaxing to listen to. So then I've subconsciously tried to slow down my material and slow down my stage presence. Next thing you know, I'm like almost myself on stage a hundred percent. So it's, it's such a weird growing, you know, thing that, you know, these young guys, they have so much more to grow that they don't even know. Well, they see a show like last comic standing and, you know, which gives you like a one minute chunk of yeah. someone's act. And they're like, Oh, that's all I need to get on TV. Uh, no you don't you have to be someone like tom segura who's like one of my favorite not just comics but people yeah uh killer i mean he's just so fucking nice and just an amazing comic and uh like he called me on a saturday afternoon he's like hey man i'm I'm filming like some opening stuff for my netflix special coming out would you help me out with this one scene I'm like where are you i mean it's <laughs> like and i'm so fucking lazy with stuff like that but like coming from him it's like i'll meet you in downtown and, yeah <laughs> uh, you know that's a guy that's the intimidating thing about this business to me is like you see someone like tom segura he should be so super famous and he i know he is yeah. to a degree it's like wow what am i he's much better than i am so yeah yeah, it's intimidating. I mean, and but he's yeah, he's blowing up right now. I think he just got a show, like a new uh, yeah pilot or something like that for uh, Cartoon Network or something. I can't remember, but uh, it's a Netflix special Netflix, coming out. Yeah, you know, Theo Vaughn's another one. Yeah, like is his thing uh, thing. His special's coming out on Netflix, uh, and it's like you, I had to follow him the other night. I had a pretty good you know said i thought i was like wow i felt like i had bombed because he did so well uh, you know it's like wow i got a lot of work to do still yeah so these comics who've been doing it for two fucking years uh get in line yeah yeah that's the the net the bad part about you know becoming a comic it's such a long process to get even to the point where you're kind of happy you know i mean the first three years or four years of doing stand-up you know three night mics a night every night you oh, know yeah. god it's it's like going through boot camp just so you can go through another kind of boot camp now you're not doing the open mics every night you're doing trying to get you know a spot once or twice a, uh, a week <laughs> and it's tough dude. Yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of good rooms in la or not a lot of good spots so yeah. uh you know it, it's it's a grind and i think a lot of people don't want to do the grind mm -hmm. you know they just want to hand it at easy that's know. what are called actors you know yeah <laughs> a lot of them are just in it to become known and they don't care they just want to make a commercial or a movie they you know they're not in it for the long 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 haul but they see some like you know, like you opening up for Rogan, they're like, well, I want to open up for Rogan. Well, you know, Red Band's been doing this 10 years, you know, or when I used to open up for Rob Schneider, uh, you know, same thing. Well, I want to open up for Rob Schneider. Well, I've been doing it a long fucking time. Uh, pay your dues a little bit more. But, you know, I'm starting to learn that's not how the business works. Yeah. That's another thing I didn't like also was the whole rule at the comedy store, which I don't think they do that anymore, but... Like if you're if you're a comic, but yet you got booked on a good commercial, or you got booked on like you know a sh a show for a couple of episodes, that that almost immediately made you pass because I I know a few handful of people that <laughs> I think the only reason they got passed was because they booked a TV show that later got canceled, you know, like a day later. So <laughs> well, I'm just telling you, if it was the old system right now, and this is breaking news story, uh, you know, three. Uh, suspects are shooting up san bernardino right now two dead one's alive i'm telling you right now if that one guy alive did comedy he'd be headlining oh yeah yeah <laughs> i'd be getting bumped for my spot thursday oh but this bastard but uh, well yeah that's uh but you know it worked for me today actually in reverse uh i just got booked on a show uh that i probably w would not have been offered but uh i'm on rob schneider's netflix show oh nice so, so and it's very small scenes but it's like a semi-recurring character but what you just talked about work, worked for me today yeah. so uh you know yeah it's uh, tv credits are i think a almost like a false credit <laughs> yeah i was gonna say well yeah, like, and then in in some states i could say all right do my not tv credits have anything to do it like like hey that people hear my voice 
over like 4 million people hear my voice every week, you know, from my not TV credits, like podcasting and, you know, doing the Joe Rogan podcast and stuff. Like if Joe Rogan podcast was a TV show, it would be one of the number one TV shows. Uh, well, yeah. But, but yet, you know, I would have been the co-host of one of the number one TV shows. You'd be headline. Yeah, I would be. Yeah. <laughs> but you can headline now because oh, yeah. your death squad following is so like... Every time I do uh, the Ice House Chronicles, I get new Death Squad fans. And it's like, wow, these people are fucking amazing. They're like, hey, uh, <laughs> what's your YouTube channel? What's where? You know, they're like very, uh, they're, and I mean this as a uh, compliment. It might come off as an insult, but I, they're like pro wrestling fans. They're mm -hmm. loyal. Yeah. Like they, they will loyal. buy your t shirts. and. But that, that should take some kind of, what I'm saying is like, how is that not put into play though for like, clubs like the comedy store or you know spots that i mean i like as an example i, I always have this ru on running joke with the general manager of the comedy store and i'm like every time i'm there i at least have to take a photo at least two or three times you know like and one time it was like ridiculous i had to take like 10 photos and i'm like and all of them were like oh brian oh no my mate i'm from australia i can't believe you're here and, you know and things like that and then and then i'm like uh when are you up are you up tonight i'm like Oh no, no, yeah, I, I, I can't even do three minutes tonight. No, sorry, you know. Oh, no, <laughs> but, I've been there. <laughs> but like, I'm like a celebrity. I'm taking photos as if like I get spots here. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, you know, I, I think podcasting, uh, like buzz, and it's still a new new thing, yeah. new medium for bookers and and managers to accept. As it's probably. Your death squad credit is probably a better credit than uh, someone being on a sitcom that week. Yeah. Because it's, you know, you're going to be, that episode airs once on Real Rob. You know, next week you're still going to do an Ice House show and, and three Rogan shows. And, right. So, uh, you know, hopefully it gains more steam than it is now. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting because uh, I, I heard from this guy that's really high up in one of the biggest radio station networks, and he says this is how far they are behind. They're like, next year is when uh, podcasting and all this stuff gets put into, uh, you know, the uh, the ra the rating system, whatever it's called, uh, right. for TV. Nielsen. Uh, Nielsen. So this is this coming year, Nielsen's finally going to be in the podcast world doing the ratings, which then opens up real advertisers like Pepsi and right. Ford and stuff. So I think once that those numbers start trickling out and you start realizing like, holy shit, Earl's getting better than half the shows on FX X right now. <laughs> well, I'm trying. I mean, I got to, you know, uh, I'm still trying to figure out uh, certain things in the podcast world, but uh you know, I'm I'm a baby cub in the podcast world, mm -hmm. so uh, I mean, you're like the, the the king of it. Like, yeah, I'm. You know, podcasting's fun, but I'm I'm getting so tired of it. <laughs> well, you're probably burned out because you do it so much. Like, yeah. I do one episode a week. Right. So I like I, doing other people's podcasts now. I think that's way better. Well, that's what got me into doing podcasts because, uh, and you know me, I'm not a cocky guy, uh, but usually I I would get whoever's podcast i would go on they would say like wow you are our best guest or, or one of them and their fans would say the same thing i'm like well why don't i just start my own <laughs> so and uh that's where dean del rey was instrumental because we started co-hosting the show together and i'm like not necessarily i thought wow this is easy but i thought well i, I kind of like to do this yeah it's fun um but it, you know it's also hard because you know i think a lot unfortunately is based on the quality of your guest right so uh and since i'm you know unknown to a degree i like you know i'm gonna have to i concentrated at least in the beginning on a niche market of 80s celebrities thinking that they're gonna be happy anyone wants to interview them right so <laughs> to a degree that works who'd you have what was your top three i mean i would say the singer from rat nice uh, who uh steven piercy uh, go to uh at Mike Knuckles on Twitter. Get some Mike Knuckles for yourself. Yeah, I'm, uh, I want some of those. Oh, they're great. Uh, I got an extra. Well, you know, we'll talk. I don't, you know, start making deals on the right. air. But uh, he he's my favorite singer of all time. It, you know, whatever that says about me. But I that love, had to feel great to have him. I was starstruck. Yeah. You know, he was chewing gum the whole time. I didn't tell him. 
So everyone comes up to me who's listening to that episode. Go, dude, I love the interview, but what was that clicking noise? Was did you not have the levels or whatever? And like I was chewing gum, like I couldn't tell him to take it out. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Tommy was probably, to be honest with you, uh, Tommy's definitely the episode that's gotten the most reaction. Yeah, well, I, there's a, you know, when you. So many people are under his control. You know, they haven't heard from you. You've heard rumors where he's been the last year or two. And that's, I think that's, uh, you know, it's interesting because I, even I was like, oh, I got to listen to that episode, you know, just to see what happens. Well, that was the whole point. I mean, I'm not a very manipulative person, but in that episode I was because I thought, well, you know, whether you love him or hate him, you're going to listen. Yeah. And he was, uh, I knew he talked a lot. So it was like, wow, this guy's heaven. And I mean, I think I maybe said literally 20 words that episode, but I didn't, I was like, fine, go ahead, talk. Yeah. You know, and uh, I mean, you know, as a podcast host, it sucks when your guest doesn't talk. Oh, uh, no, it, but that's one good thing about having, I usually have a co-host or something, you know, that you, you that you can bounce off of or uh, because that that is a horrible when, you know, it, when the other person gives one word answers, that's when you ha it's nice to have somebody else be like, all right, I could at least talk to right. this guy here. <laughs> you know? Like, I know you talk a lot and, and I'm, that's a compliment, you know? So I said, wow, this will be fun to interview because we know a lot of the same people and we, we, we do the same shit. Uh, <laughs> like there was one guest, I won't say the name, uh, an eighties guest. And the, I get it. You're from that era. You're sick of getting asked the same questions. But this particular guest had, you know, not done a lot, to be honest with you. So they had the attitude of like, well, why am I here? And I said, like, well, how about let's talk about this? And they're known for one particular thing. I don't really talk, want to talk about that. Like, well, how about this? Uh, yeah. I'm, so it was like, it was a it was like 47 minutes, the podcast. Because <laughs> it was like, and I was struggling and I'm. I do research on every guest. I read their books or listen to their music, and it was tough. Yeah. So, uh, you know. I'm, do you think with Tommy, there was a few times that you wanted to call him out on some shit, but you didn't because you just didn't want confrontation? Well, yeah, I'm a pussy in that regard. I'm not very confrontational uh, in nature. Uh, and, you know, he... And I'm going to try and get into this in part two. You know, I don't believe him when he says he was going to pass me. I mean, uh, you know, for five years I was up there, uh, I think, proving myself as a comic. And uh, after five years, I'm seeing people I've never seen up there past. Yeah. Uh, so I, I might get into that a little bit more with him. Uh, but his episode is like, I'm still getting messages daily. Dude, I never listen to podcasts. I listen to the whole thing. Yeah. And big name comics, like a room comics. And so I was like, wow. You know, and I mean, even Joey Diaz last night said, hey, uh, I'm going to listen to that. Yeah. And I never tell someone of that nature or of that stature, hey, will you listen to this? But oh, I told I, Rogan he has to listen to this. Just yeah. I mean, I would never dream of going up to Joe going, Hey, will you listen to my podcast? <laughs> but I almost wanted to, cause I mean, Tommy was such a divisive figure, especially to someone like Joe or Joey or you certainly to me. I mean, when he, when, when, when he talks, I really want to believe that's what he thinks. And I, I, I kind of think he does. I just think he has episodes. like a lot of people we know, maybe because he, you know, near the end, he acted nice to me and to my face. But then, you know, then like that crazy shit happened. And I was like, all right, what's that all about? You know, where'd that come from? Well, I mean, that was the weird thing with me and him is like our non-comedy conversations were really cool. Yeah, they're fine. Like I remember, uh, remember, I don't know what member, uh, I remember when we had an hour long conversation about David Lee Ross solo albums, like who? Who on earth could I have that conversation with? Right. Like David Lee Roth couldn't talk about us. Right. Uh, so I was like, wow, this guy's kind of cool. And we both like Sons of Anarchy and The Shield and The Wire. But then... Uh, then Josh Nasser was in Sons of Anarchy and ruined the whole show for all of us. Well, he was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I love... Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, it's a TV credit. Yeah, no, no. I'm just saying that it's so weird when you're like so invested in a show. Like I'm I talking know. seasons. And then one of your buddies just stumbles in there and you're like, ah! What do you get 
get out of there. But he had a great uh, <laughs> role in that because he, he, I don't think, I think he made a one line in seven episodes, but he was always in a major scenes. <laughs> yeah. So it was funny. And he has a pretty funny joke about how he knew where the cameras were. So he'd always kind of like lean into the shot. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I hope people still listen to the Tommy episode, but I wanted to have you on because I know you might have disagreed with. Yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to have you on just because, but I, I'm shy with asking people who I know are busy to come on because I think yeah, they're probably too busy to do my podcast. But uh, you know, I know you had a history with Tommy, and I mean, yeah, and I and I might have like kind of what was a little mean about the whole thing. My, my whole frustration with him that is he just, I don't like seeing and having to deal with all the brainwashing that he really doesn't realize he did to all these young comics. And I've heard the good parts and the bad parts of him, but uh, I wanted, you know, if you just listen to that though, you would think, Oh, this guy was brilliant and this guy you know like i'm just saying don't believe all the shit because there's there's a lot of holes in his stories and him loving rogan and stuff like that that's bullshit all that shit's bullshit you know well that's what i remember you know i specifically you know i brought up two names because i thought i i'm pretty sure he had problems with these people so i just want to see what his reaction would be and rogan was one and danish and o'neill uh mm -hmm. were the others uh because i I had a feeling. I mean, they don't like him. I'll put it that way. Yeah. So I was interested to see his, uh, you know, toward the end, I said, all right, I'm going to mention some names. You give me one word. And he's like, well, I, I don't know if I can do one word. <laughs> and so it ended up being a couple of sentences. But yeah. Uh, yeah, if you don't know him, you think, wow, this guy's got some great points about, you know, comedy and the, mm -hmm. you know, the, you know, one thing I disagree with, he's like the college system at the store, which is, Basically, you pay your dues, you start at JV, and you work your way up to varsity. But there's a lot of people who went straight to varsity. Oh, overnight, who aren't even doing comedy, but we're past, you know, it's, yeah, it's frustrating. So that's, that's the, the big thing, because, like, I've been going there for a long-ass time, you know, and I know people that started going there four years ago, and they're already on the wall, and they're more geared towards being coming an actor than they are towards doing comedy and you know just separating the the acting and the actresses from stand-up comedy i think is one of the most important things you know well yeah i mean like like i always think i'm in it for the right reasons like, right i'm not in it for the fame or money i certainly realize if you're good at comedy you you will get those things to varying degrees but mm -hmm. i just like doing it yeah there's a lot of people I think ever since Jim Carrey made $20 million for Cable Guy mm -hmm. and that story came out, he lived in his van, came to the comedy store and the rest is history that people think, wow, I want, I'd like to make $20 million a film. I'll, I'll just get into stand-up. And it's like they, what they don't realize is Jim Carrey fucking struggled for 10 years. Yeah. And, you know. So if you get into comedy for money, at least in L.A. comedy, you'll quit after about two months. Right. Just don't take our spots. Just quit yeah, faster. Just, you know, thin the herd, baby. <laughs> like, do something else. Not everyone has to do comedy. Most people can't. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a tough business. Oh, I, I, I want to talk to you about boner pills real quick. Oh, yeah. I mean, listen. Uh, <laughs> sure. I mean, uh, ask away. Uh, so recently, I, I, I've had like a fun addiction, not addiction, hobby with boner pills, you know, different kinds that you get at gas stations and stuff. Those are the worst kind. Those are the worst kind, right. So recently, I started seeing things when I'm on them, like visuals and stuff like that. Like I was tripping. And so I immediately went to the FDA.org uh, and they had a list of every single boner pill and they've tested them and told you what's in them, like the secret ingredients that are in them. I don't want to know. Most of it's steroids. Most of them are steroids uh, mixed with Viagra. Uh, but the steroid thing is what it's gotten to me because uh, all of them almost have steroids in them. And I'm so who is that? John Jones? Saying yeah. that he tested positive for steroids, but he was like, oh, I just got this Viagra or something. And I know. I, well, <laughs> Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva, yeah. 
that he might have been on to something there because uh, uh, they all had him. And so I stopped taking them immediately. All that weird shit ha- stopped going away where I was like seeing weird things. And, you know, I stopped uh, having my dick stopped being able to like carry like a, a kettlebell. Well, I mean, I take them for maintenance. I mean, I'm 47. <laughs> I don't hide from taking them. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a dick pill connoisseur. <laughs> What do they call those people who are into wine? A sommelier, uh, 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 like they're they're really knowledgeable about wine. A sommelier. A sommelier. I, I think I'm saying it right for once in my life. I'm like a sommelier for dick pills yeah. and energy drinks. Yeah, I, I definitely have tried. I've probably tried maybe fifty of the generic gas station versions of them. Fifty different ones. I have most of the cardboard things i collect them like baseball cards and i have most of them uh and i just went through my list of all of them on the fda it's pretty pretty interesting though. i mean you know i used to take hot rod 5000 yep which i got from uh, n101 in it, west Hollywood. you don't take that anymore it gave me it started giving me headaches out of the blue the like, new formula huh really severe like i'd rather go limp than S- deal with the headaches so you're on the other one the combat missile one or whatever it's called no no i uh <laughs> to be completely honest with you i'll even tell my viewing audience for you locals in the uh hollywood area i go to the Seven Eleven on holloway and la cienega uh i get my larry and lenny cookies uh, my diet rock star energy drinks <laughs> and zen zen z-e-n oh, yeah i've had zen um they Last a week, one pill lasts a week, and no headache, and it's a pleasant boner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hot rod. What do you mean about pl- oh? It's, yeah, because hot rod would just like it's like a baby's arms yeah. stretching for a hot rod five thousand <laughs> didn't give you a boner. It gave you a, an aluminum bat. Yeah, and it was great. I mean, uh, you know, but it it it's not you know. It wasn't pleasant. It literally felt Hurt like sometimes you had a steel rod in your your groin, uh, and sometimes it wouldn't go away. Like it would just be there for like hours. You're like, okay, get out of here, lady. Yeah, and then one night, uh, and this is gonna sound like I'm bit running on you doing a joke, but I'm not. Uh, I took one because I thought I had a live one coming over, and she canceled. Don't you hate that? Oh, it's the worst. So then I I had so much energy. I'm like, I'm just gonna go to the gym, and I go to two gay gyms, and so. Oh, no. About 20 minutes into bench pressing, I had the biggest boner you've ever seen at a gay gym. <laughs> so you got to be real careful when you take these things and make sure the girl comes over. Yeah. Or otherwise, don't go to the 24-hour fitness. Yeah, I know I know. This, things like Zen, like the one that you're talking about, Power Zen, which is they also have like the Triple X Zen, which is the three times version of the one you have. Uh, they... Those are like they they make it swollen. Like it it's not more like put all the blood out of your body into the dick. It's more right. like like you just got bit by a snake and now it's like this hard swollen dick. I like that one better t- also because it's like it's not it's 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 thicker usually also. It's more of a thicker dick where that the the Hot Rod 5000 was more of I thought my dick was going to blow up a few times. Yeah, I mean it literally was just like um you know, an aluminum rod was like in your dick. And even if you came, uh, and I really hope my nieces aren't listening to this one, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, Zen gives you a pleasant. And, and the after effect is, you know, your dick is still kind of big, but it's it's limp, but it's like still ready to go. It's ready for action. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you 20 year old and 30 year olds listening to this, you might think, oh, well, I'm never going to need that. Listen, let me tell you something right now. There's not a healthier guy on the planet than me. Never had a drug or drink in my life. My insides are of a 20-year-old. So everyone needs it when you, you know, hit a certain age. So Yeah, and it, it's also it's you could still benefit even if you're 20 or 30. You would st- you could still benefit from it cuz I it does make it a a thicker boner. Like it's not just like hey, I got a boner. No, this is like a you know, like a snake bite boner. Yeah, and I, whether you have a big dick or a small dick or something in between, you know it's uh, you know it's like drinking Gatorade for your dick. Yeah, you know that we uh, you know especially if you jack off a lot. This this guy gave me uh, 
a couple of weeks ago, he was in a wheelchair and he knew, cause I used to do a bit about boner pills about, cause I would take them, I'd take one on stage every night at some time for some reason. Uh, but there was, uh, he gave me a box of real Viagra or Cialis, Cialis. And so he gave me prescription, normal box of C- He gave me like a hundred pills and I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. I just got the jackpack. That's like the best gift to give a comic. Uh, so I took one and it wasn't, it was such a baby version of what you can buy at 7 Eleven. Like that Zen, 10 times better than, than store bought Viagra, I thought, or Cialis. Because I think Zen also has things like zinc in it, which is a natural, uh, not aphrodisiac, but a uh, dick. Uh, helper, uh, yeah. magnesium. Uh, Viagra is just straight Viagra, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've taken Viagra once, uh, and I've told the story before, but really, super long story short, my buddy's dad had died. Mm-hmm. He was taking uh, the super Viagras, mm-hmm. and I didn't know it at the time. So I, I, he came down after we went to his house to console him. And he's like, "Earl, here's my dad's Viagra. You know, you can have it." I took one, nothing. You know, like, oh, maybe I should take another one. Uh, took two nothing oh no uh ended up taking four viagras that night because i thought wow this this stuff doesn't work uh woke up the next morning uh beat red from my forehead to my navel <gasps> still nothing uh, so i took another one oh fifth no one. about an hour later uh i had a boner that is you know uh as hard as my metal hockey trophies <laughs> And it wouldn't go down. Uh, That's dangerous. Yeah, no, it was. So I went to the doctor, brought the pills. I said, Doc, this huge boner. Uh, What do I do? And he's literally, his only advice was, you got to jack off till it goes down. And he said, let me take a look at the pills. So he looked at me and goes, Earl, you know these are 50 milligrams each, right? Oh, my God. And normal Viagra for, like, guys my size, your size is 10 to 20 milligrams. So I had literally uh, 500 times the normal amount of Viagra. Oh, my God. And that's so dangerous because that's why you're, you're not supposed to do things like, uh, you know, like cocaine or, or something. Because it's taking all the blood and putting it in your dick. And then, like, you could take another drug that that goes against that. And you could just fuck your shit up. The, the Lamar Odin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, he took 10 dick pills in three days, which is insane. Yeah. I mean... You could get away with maybe two two zens a week, and that's pushing it. Yeah, uh, maybe if you took one on the sixth day, it's like you know when the it's kind of leaving your system. But Lamar Odom, he was on coke, ten dick pills in three days, plus I'm guessing booze. Maybe uh, I mean that's like it's a thank God he's so big. You know what is he six nine two fifty? Yeah. Uh, if we did that, we'd be dead. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just be careful. You can buy Zen at any 7-Eleven. Uh, but uh, start off with, the, uh, I think, the 1250 milligram one. Yeah, and then go up to the 4,000 one. They have one that's 3,500. I think it's called it's uh, the, the pink one. The pink one, yeah. It's color-coded to make purchases yeah. easier. And, uh, you know, and be careful what you take with them. Like Red Band said, if you're doing coke, and I hopefully you aren't, but if you are, uh, you know, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah. Try to only do it when you're like maybe having some drinks or something, if you're doing anything. But uh, also another thing, go check out the FDA.org. You know, look up your favorite boner pill on there because there's a whole spreadsheet where you can like look it up. And San Diego uh, was what my always my favorite place to get boner pills. And there was this one called Black Power which was the best one I've ever had. I don't yeah. think Tommy would have liked that one. Yeah. <laughs> but that one really did last seven days. A lot of them say they last seven days, but they don't really. That one really did last seven days. Like it, it, like it fucked me up for a while. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it uh, you know, it's, they're, they're powerful things. I mean, uh, but it's kind of the wild west for dick pills right now. Like, I think it's going to be, eventually like like uh ephedrine uh oh yeah like or which was i used to take you know i'm naturally low energy uh so i would take an ephedra before i went to the gym and uh it's uh, it's it was legal at the time but then yeah, they outlawed take it, it at high school what was that shit called that was really popular well, Zinedrin, yeah. uh it used to be ephedra and then uh I remember like the last week, all the health food stores had it. 
had uh, their ear to the ground and they knew the FDA was going to ban it. So it was like they were having these crazy sales, three for one. I'm like, wow. And, uh, you know, I know of one place who still sells it. Oh, really? To, uh, you know, keep that information. Well, private. Is Tribulus still legal? Tribulus is legal. Uh, um, you know, it's just a natural testosterone uh yeah, you I know, enhancer. I used to take it. It made me crazy. Well, it's like <laughs> made out of like bull semen. Yeah. Oh. Like literally. That's like, why I always rubbed it around my lips before I took it. <laughs> no wonder you like sucking dick. <laughs> well, I knew you like sucking dick. That was the truth. That was the truth. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, you talk about stuff that, you know, you don't want to know the ingredients to. When someone showed me the tribulus was, came from bull semen, I'm like, you know, I'm good with Zen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but. Isn't there, there's some things that you could take from like, you know, like nutrition store that will give you the same, uh, you know, kind of benefits as like a boner pill. Isn't there? Cause like, I, I know that a lot of these boner pills all use the same kind of four different, uh, ingredients, a lot of natural, like. I think one is like, uh, well, uh, he, now I sound like Rogan with the, uh, you know, his knowledge of herbs and stuff. Yeah. But I, this is one area that I probably could uh, compete with Rogan on in terms yeah. of knowledge. Uh, uh, natural, uh, for you out there who are afraid to take what me and Brian are talking about <laughs> and taking, uh, you know, maca root. Mockery. That's it. Yeah, is, you can get it on um, Amazon. You can, oh, you can get yeah. that uh, at uh, N101. You can get it at Gold's Gym. Mm -hmm. uh, zinc is a uh, an alleged uh, natural um, dick supplement. Uh, chocolate, mm -hmm. some people think, is an aphrodisiac. It's not necessarily a will get your dick hard, but... Uh, but I mean, I'm talking like the chocolate at Trader Joe's, right? The like uh, the organic, you know, raw chocolate. Yeah, is. raw chocolate, but it doesn't taste that great. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There was uh, another one. It was like a. Oh, uh, there's uh, vitamin E um, is uh, rumored to have uh, you know, uh, niacin is a great one because. Uh, you know, it uh, expands the blood. You know, bodybuilders take niacin because it uh, expands the blood vessels. Right. So, like, when you're doing bicep curls, more blood gets into your bicep and theoretically is supposed to give you a bigger arm. Uh, but, you know, your dick is the biggest blood vessel in your body. Yeah. So what niacin doesn't go into your arms or your squats or your whatever goes into your dick. And this uh, probably works with women, you know, maybe mixed with like tequila or something. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's the, the that's the uh, the catch 22 with booze anyway is uh, alcohol restricts your blood vessels. Mm -hmm. So you got to double up and uh, Yohimbi is uh, it's an African root. Uh, that gives you an almost hot rod 5,000 like boner. It's not very pleasant, but if you're, uh, if you got a hot date, young chick, you think you might need a little help that night uh, and you don't want to take the Zins or the hot rod 5,000s or the black power, I would recommend going to, uh, you know, your Trader Joe's or, uh, you know, there's a store in Westwood. I don't know the name of it. It's the only store out here that sells uh, Rogan's uh, on it. Oh, really? Uh, it's like basically Whole Foods and Trader Joe's competition, but it's only in Westwood. Uh, fuck, I forget the name of it. It's not Mrs. Gooch's, but uh, some... Uh, if you go on uh, Yelp and uh, look up Vitamin Store in Westwood, it pops up. Uh, they have, uh, you know, natural supplements. I would recommend starting off with the Yohembi pill, Two maca root pills and uh, maybe vitamin E. It'll there get you go. going. Yeah. Then visit uh, their uh, on it section. Uh, o n i t is it? O n n i t. Yeah. Don't uh, don't go to o n i t. O n n i t. Uh, I use their uh, mood uh, thing, and it actually yeah. helped. New mood. I love new mood because I'm all about. Uh, it's got that, a little five HTP, a little zinc in there. It's. Uh, Wait, no, that, no, I'm thinking of that. Well, he has several. Th I took the cartilage one and uh, Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain. I would always tell Joe at the store, hey, I took that Alpha Male stuff. And he's like, it's Alpha Brain, you idiot. Uh, alpha Male is those nails for guys. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, you know, I could go on for an hour, another hour. But see, my goal, Red Band, and I'm sure it's yours too, on your 
shows. I want people to go. I want to listen to part two with you. So this is the part of the show where, and I don't think you need me plugging your online presence, but where can inappropriate Earl fans find you? Uh, Red Band on Twitter, R E D B A N, Death Squad TV, and uh, Shop Squad TV is my t shirt line with all the Death Squad cats. And please, uh, and Facebook, do you uh, do you want people contacting you I on there? I don't really fuck with Facebook too much. It's more Twitter based and Instagram. Instagram, Instagram yeah. It's Red, still Red Band? Yeah, yeah. Um, and Periscope, do you? Periscope, yeah. Periscope all the time. Periscope way too much. Uh, but yeah, but yeah. you're making your own shit. Yeah. Just keeping it out there. And that's the whole, you know, you struggling comics out there. You're bummed out. You're not getting stage time. Like there's one comic at the store who's new to town. You can tell he's bummed out. He's not getting up. It's like, dude, make your own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and, you know, that's so important. The make, store will contact you. Spots. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you, <laughs> you know, uh, although you're not past at the store, you're, you make you have your own show there. Yeah, two it, shows there. And, right. Well, you have Kill Tony, <laughs> Kill Tony, and then uh, that's every Monday at eight p.m. And then we have uh, Death Squad Secret Show, which is once or twice a week. So, and it's the best lineups in town. It's like a typical yeah. line. A, a typical lineup is uh, Rogan, Ian Edwards, Joey Diaz, Tony Hinchcliffe, Dean Del Rey. Uh, uh, we've had Doug Stanhope, Louis, Pablo Francisco. Like we've had, you know, Tom Dane, Segura. Yeah. Uh, so it's like the, you won't find a better lineup uh, in the country uh, than these shows. So if you're in L.A. or uh, look uh, on uh, DeskWad.tv and for click on tour uh, dates, tour dates, they were just in Ohio. They go all over the country. Uh, you, the lineups are stellar and uh, kill Tony Monday nights mm -hmm. and uh, Red Band's one of the good ones in this business. And believe me, folks, there's not a lot. Uh, <laughs> So follow him. He don't need it, but do it anyway. <laughs> I think I plugged Ralphie May's special. I'm I'm sure Ralphie doesn't need my uh, <laughs> ten extra uh, sales, but I try and get the word out about people I actually like. So thank you, uh, Earl. Dude, thank you, uh, and come back anytime. Uh, I thought you were the perfect guest to have on after Tommy because you're. Uh, yeah, I can't wait for the next episode or all of that. I mean, I'm you know I don't want to repeat too much, so I'm I'm trying to figure. I want comics to s send in questions, not because I'm too lazy to uh, come up with them, but I know a lot of comics have come up to me in the last week. So, dude, you should ask them this. Uh, you know why didn't he do this? And uh, you know the only questions I'm not going to ask him is why didn't he pass me? Yeah. Uh, one guy actually sent me that question. It's like, dude, I'm not going to, you know, uh, but Ryan Stout, uh, I said, do you want me to do your questions anonymously? He's like, no, you can use my name. Oh, <laughs> he, wow. He's got like 10 questions. Cause right. you, and they're all good. Like legitimate, uh, you know, your philosophy on why you did this. And so if you have questions for Tommy, uh, and this episode with red band will be tomorrow, Thursday, so you've got four days to send me questions on Facebook or my email, eskakel, that's E-S-K-A-K-E-L, at AOL. I'm still on AOL. It's embarrassing. Are you kidding me? I hate it. You've got mail. Is that oh, still? That's the worst. Oh, my gosh. What? Go Get Gmail, man. I'm going to have to, off air, get your help on some things because <laughs> right. I literally, every morning I wake up, I have 24 new emails on AOL. And two are legitimate ones. It's yeah. the spam on theirs. Yeah. Well, no one's running AOL anymore. It's all like robots and stuff now. Thank you, Steve Case, <laughs> uh, you know, for ruining my inbox. But, uh, you know, part two, I hope people like as much as part one. Uh, we're going to get a little deeper into Tommy's philosophies. And I might be a little more, not necessarily combative, but uh, now that he trusts me, hopefully it's like, all right let's really you know get into it and uh, yeah, i know there's certain things he can't talk about yeah um due to confidentiality uh clauses but uh, there's yeah. other things he can't yeah. so uh like prescription medicines that he takes right i mean allegedly <laughs> allegedly uh, you know the, allegedly you know some nights you would walk into his office and it would be like the london fog in there <laughs> but uh we'll let him talk about it so uh guys you know the drill inappropriate earl SoundCloud and iTunes, uh, leave a review on iTunes. I'm just trying to get into the top 
two thousand podcasts. Uh, <laughs> And uh, follow Red Band, uh, Joe Rogan, Joey Diaz, uh, Tony Hinchcliffe, Josh Martin. You know, he's the hidden uh, behind the scenes uh, gem of uh, the Death Squad Network. Uh, Tom Segura, Christina Pazitsky, uh, Dean Del Rey. Uh, it's a nice little family the Comedy Store and Death Squad has. And uh, just uh, Kim Congdon, uh, uh, Sarah Weinshank. Uh, you know there's too many names to but you know we're all one family we all love each other and support each other ralphie may uh craig fitzsimmons i mean uh don barris don barris dom herrera the uh, d- d- just the uh, the list could go on forever but you get the idea follow all those people and uh we will see you tomorrow with red band thursday and then tommy moore sue monday some sequels aren't the, is better Hopefully this will be the Rocky 2 of podcasts. Tommy Morris, back in the house.